We have been enjoying some unusually fine weather for the last few days here in the UK, so I decided to blow the dust off the DJI Spark drone and take it down to my local marina for a flyabout, leaving Deb and the kids at a park nearby. We always take radios with us when we are out and about, the kids very often with the small PMR radios and me and Debbie with a UV5R or something similar set to low power. Now this has happened a few times in the past and in places where we have had poor mobile reception it has been a great source of great annoyance and in some cases could have caused major issues. And the problem that we have faced is one of the volume turning itself down. It may seem trivial but I can assure you that it really isn't. Debbie and the kids don't pay the same level of attention to the radio as I do. I think jamming it in a pocket or in a bag, very often I can be left with no way of speaking to them to find that when I get back the radio is off or turned down. So I got thinking of a quick solution to this problem. We of course always lock the handset keypads, but this still leaves the radio vulnerable to being switched off and or turned down. I wanted a method that was quick, safe in particular for the kids, didn't expose the radio or its volume pot to the elements and was cheap and quick to make and something I could attach to the radios that we mainly use when we are out and about. Here is a bog standard UV5R Plus. There are quite a few style differences with the UV5R versions but a lot of the dimensions that they share are the same because in essence the control board is exactly the same. It became very quickly obvious what the simple solution would be that would cover all of my design criteria that I have already stated and came up with this basic design which consists of a very flush fitting cap to go over the pot with an internal grip that fits over the pot shaft. I also put a small hole into the side of it so that it can be hung from the lanyard tab allowing it to essentially travel with the radio. The other side of the clip would slide over the antenna base gripping the soft rubber material the cap is offset from the antenna base such that it fits right into the recess around the volume knob, completely sealing it. A small rubber gasket could be fitted in there to make a really good job of it if operating conditions are particularly bad. The first sample I printed off didn't have the grip inside for the pot shaft and whilst it fit very well it didn't offer the level of grip that I was after, so I tweaked the design just a little. This is the great thing about 3D printing. Bringing the model into Cura, the slicing software, I chose a finer resolution of 0.1mm layer height and printed the cap on a raft. This is a great idea with small items, as printing a very fine layer height onto a brim isn't a great idea with this printer. The 3D printing viewers will know what I mean here. You can see the raft here shown in blue. It takes longer to print and uses more plastic, but it's worth it. This print took just over an hour to do on the Ender 3 Pro. You can see the cap taking shape with the internal plastic grip that will hold the device tight over the pot. The volume knob can be set in any position too. The design does not include a pinch flat as there is no need for it. After a bit more whirring and a few more nice sips of whiskey, the cap was ready and popped out of the printer. You can see how much nicer the finish is when printing at 0.1mm resolution. However, you have to factor in the printing time. It literally takes twice as long. The Lazy Boy chairs I printed for Lewis were printed at 0.2 resolution and look great. They would have taken 23 hours to print at 0.1 resolution. However, you can slice the model in Cura at differing layer heights to speed up the process a little. Here is a nice example of the raft. You can really see if your bed is level when examining the raft afterwards. This is pretty good. Here is the finished item. I'm pretty happy with that and just need to clean out the support plastic to finish it off. I cleaned out the plastic and that was done, ready to go. You can obviously print these in any colour you like. I chose black because that's a sort of matches my personality. Right, after a few sips of whiskey there, and some of you might think I'm an alcoholic, uh, but I'm not. Um, we try this on for size again give it a, a good push down and uh, like I said I'm definitely going to drop a little rubber gasket into the top of the radio there just to give it that nice bit of extra seal I've got some little o-rings I'm gonna pop in there and this really was a much more snug fit this isn't going anywhere and obviously you can you can decrease the diameter of the grip around the antenna if you want it to be really grippy 
Um, so yeah, you can just play around if you make one of these, or I can share this file with anyone who's interested. Uh, uh, if you're not proficient with the 3D software, I should just leave a link to uh, where you can download this in the description if you want to have a little play around. And um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. I mean, some of you might think it's a bit over-engineered, really, and when you there probably are other thimbles or things you can do, but hey, I've got a 3D printer, why not? Um, so there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I'm going to do more of these little quick five minute videos on not just 3D printing but on other things as well radio related. So uh, I hope you tune in next time and I hope this survives the toils and spills and spins and, and whatnot the kids and uh, Debbie are going to put it through and uh, I don't get left out in the cold. Right, with that I shall leave you and congratulations to Ringway Manchester for getting over 10,000 subscribers. That's just crazy. Well done Lewis, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.